expected. Girls performed better than boys in English, Kiswahili and Sign Language, while boys excelled in math, science, social studies and religion. And to talk more about the result and what we've been able to witness in as far as the developments in that front, joining me in studio now is Jonathan Wasaya. He's an education expert. Good to see you again from yesterday. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for yeah. making time for News Center. Yeah. So let's begin with that note. We're talking about where girls performed better and boys. Um, the boys, of course, excelling in math, science, English as well. Are you surprised with the manner in which they were classified? Um, it's the first time, I think, in a long time that boys are beating girls in language. Right. Uh, but then also what we need to uh, be alive to is that the population demographics in Kenya we are now having increasingly more women than men. 42% uh, of the population are women. So in as much as we do not have a high number of girls in school, we are seeing the gap close and we are about to get to the gender parity of one to one. One to one. Yeah. And then there's the special needs that in this particular exam only 1,950 uh, candidates were registered and yet from other figures we've seen there's quite a number of more kids that have special needs out there that did not manage to sit the examination. What do you think is the gap? Um, the gap is not in policy. We have very good policy on inclusive education and what the environment in school needs to be for these children to uh, participate effectively in the education system. Mm -hmm. But the problem we have is in practice because most of the schools do not have the infrastructure to keep these children in to complete a cycle of education. Mm -hmm. Number two is stigma. There are children who in their extended families and in the neighborhood, they have not seen any person with disability. Mm -hmm. So they tend to tout the others with disability when they get to meet them in school. Right. So they drop out, but also the households, parents make deliberate decisions to keep their disabled children away from the public eye, thus not taking them into the education system. Yes. Yeah. And also uh, something that we're seeing, you know, increasing in numbers now, the number of underage students mm -hmm. that were enrolled and sat the examinations, that rose. And looking at the factors, mm -hmm. you know, some allude this to an increasing working class that does not have time then to take care of the parents, or of their kids rather, and then they pass over that mantle to the teachers so that at a very young age, at class uh, one, you have four-year-olds pretty much joining. Yep, and, 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 and I think it is something that needs to be mainstreamed in policy and followed up in practice at the school mm. because this will be registered mostly in Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, and part of the western counties where increasingly um, what we call the middle class within those counties right. are working couples. So they tend to take their children into support systems away from home where the children are initiated to education and not play. Mm -hmm. And then children tend to join the primary school when they are three years, three and a half, or four years uh, yeah. at times. So do you think the country should have a discussion around age limits? Because the question becomes, are these children developed even enough to sit for these examinations? Are they being moved too fast? Uh, the discussion is a, a discussion that needs to begin at the household. So okay. that as two parents, you need to decide when is our child ready to join school? And the government should not police you and uh, decide for you when your child needs to go to school. But this is a discussion that um, many people do not have. And uh, the women usually hold sway because um, the woman at the household looks at the support that the house help may be offering mm -hmm. and then decides, no, my child is not going to sit with this house help any longer. I'm taking them to school. But we need to go back and just get grounded on the basics that when are our children ready to join school? Right. And for me, uh, as a parent and as an educationist, I think we need to begin it at four years. Mm. Really? Yes, at four years. Not six uh, or Sophia, seven? Sophia, when you are seven years and you're in class one, that's okay. I joined, <laughs> you did class I, I joined six. class one when I was eight years old and I... I did well. Yeah? yeah, and you did well. <laughs> All right. Um, th there's been a lot of praise, uh, yeah. and the education CS and the sector in general has been held in as far as the manner in which the examinations were you know, administered. Now we have the results coming out in record time. But there are reports coming out now indicating that a school in Nyandarwa County, Kanyugi mm -hmm. uh, Primary School, a total, uh, rather, they failed to get their KCP English examination results. Mm -hmm. Can this be looked at as a blot, as a loophole? Uh, because examination officials have not responded yet. Uh -huh. Now, there is something that um, the Cabinet Secretary mentioned yesterday that people have not paid attention to. Right. 
he said that there is a helpline that parents and candidates and schools who have discrepancies in their results need to call. Okay. And he was quick to mention that the helpline is 24 hours. Now, if you look at um, my random check in the sector, is that some candidates have received um, results that have an XX on particular subject and mostly language. The NEC, um, the Kenya National Examination Council, on their website, they have indicated that if you've received an X on any of your subject results, that is something that will be resolved between now and the 9th of December. Okay. Um, and uh, Are they if you why? care. No, they have not said why, but you see the candidate of the school needs to check why. Okay. Now, the, 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 there are a few things that happen in marking and processing results for examination. There are children who interchange their index numbers. So you are index 001, but you write 10 at the end instead of 001. And it's just the tension of the exam. Now, the examiner follows the scripts and identifies there is another number 10. So they follow the whole trail and isolate the number 10, release those results. But then they have to find out, was it a genuine mistake or there was an imposter who sat that paper for you mm -hmm. and forgot your index number? Right. Or, so th there are things that can be sorted out. Okay. But again, if you look at the discrepancies that are being reported in the processed results that have been released, mm -hmm. the discrepancies are very minimal. Okay. But then the question we need to be asking the cabinet sector is this. Why did he rush to release the results instead of waiting for one more day, isolate these things, deal with them, and release the results next Monday? Mm -hmm. Because we have, we have um, from my own uh, you're saying intervention... saying this is not a major you know, setback no, it's, in as far as the issue no, that it is, to be it, clarified? Yeah, no, it is not major right. because if you look at it, it's something that they, they are giving themselves um, a window of seven days to resolve it. To resolve so it is not major. Okay. But again... If it is minor that way, why didn't they just hold on, rectify everything and release, you know, a clean set of results for the nation? Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about ranking because that's a debate that continues. There are mm -hmm. proponents for it, there are critics. And, you know, in the <coughs> past, it used to be such a hype, uh, full-color kind of event in as far as the releasing of exams because then you know who's top, yeah. who is not. The media would know where mm -hmm. to go immediately. Uh, but then now it's going to be making a comeback. What are those clear methodology, especially in as far as the stakeholders, that would satisfy the sides that differ in as far as how to go about the ranking, and that would be useful for the kids? Um, ranking has not been useful for the learners and most of uh, the parents yeah. because of uh, the lack of credibility that the whole system uh, has, uh, ha has engaged in. Mm -hmm. And you've seen that private schools have benefited more from the ranking because you are able to register only 10 students and then it's a headline, um, Sophia Anuna Alliance uh, Academy, <laughs> number one in, number Kenya. one in Kenya. You know, 100% of your students scored A. Yeah. So what that means, you are given leverage over the other public schools mm -hmm. because yours has a record of performance over time. Right. But what needs to happen is as we get to legitimize and make the system more credible, then we need to expand mm -hmm. that the children are not assessed on what they can recall. Mm. Because technically what we are doing now is we take you through a system for eight years and then we give you two hours to sit an exam and, and then we rank you. Oh, you've covered yeah. for eight years. So, and we have children who have grown. Yeah. And Sophia, education is not about your ability to write English or to speak it or read it. There are children who learn very core skills when they get into school. And this may be just the ability to collaborate and work with others. Right. You know, if you've grown up in a household where you are the only kid, so you have your father and mother or your caregiver, you tend, the largest number of people you interact with are three in the house or four. Mm. So you get into a school and you interact with a crowd. Now, for you to do that for eight years consistently, that is a skill you've learned. It's a skill that nobody can take away from you. Mm. There are people who learn how to speak. I got into Form 1, I could not speak a word in English. Because in my primary school, I was taught in mother tongue through and through. Oh, wow. But Tangani for me, baby. yes, yeah. <laughs> for me, the biggest thing was learning how to speak English. Yeah, yeah. So it is, it is something, and it may not have been reflected in the exam, but for me to engage in public speaking yeah. and choral verses and 
there are those who play uh, football, rugby, netball. Mm -hmm. Can we find a way of aggregating those scores so that yeah. they are part of these results? So right. that we are telling you, you are season in school for eight years. This is what you're coming out with. And which is what yeah. even initially, you know, some have claimed led to so many cheating cases because you want to be able to cram, memorize yeah. all of this stuff, mm -hmm. which at the end of the day doesn't really come in handy when it comes to the workplace, which takes us to the conversation around the curriculum. And even as a, nas uh, as a national um, forum was put together earlier in the year, and they had those conversations. The question still becomes, do we, are we churning out uh, you know, students <coughs> and citizens later on in life that will benefit the country. Because at the end of the day, you get into a classroom, you ask, what do you want to become after finish school? You know, you'll hear pilot, doctor, and our success view is very narrow. You know, there isn't uh, much of a broad base in as far as what we can all do to ensure all hands are on deck to grow and develop the country, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yes, and, and where we get it wrong is that we sit in hotels in the city here and talk about these big things on what we want this country to become. And we miss the point because we do not prepare the teachers mm -hmm. who are supposed to mold the children. Right. And what happens is this. If you are taught by a teacher who did not have mastery of their content and subject matter, and you become a teacher, mm -hmm. you will emulate how you were taught. Right. So you will also just be an average teacher. So the best thing that this country can do is to start investing in 21st century methodology for teachers, mm -hmm. so that we have credible teachers, we have outstanding teachers, who we then send to the school to transform our children. Mm -hmm. So before we change the content and other things that we are belaboring now, we need to change the preparation of the teachers, so that we have an army of teachers we are deploying into the schools to change how the curriculum is delivered. Mm -hmm. And you notice that the biggest problem we have in Kenya is that most of these processes are personality driven. Right. Uh, when Matiangi came in, he found the education sector was shaky. Mm -hmm. So in stabilizing it, he started very quickly pushing for the curriculum process to move forward and be concluded. But then after a short while, the exams were here. He abandoned that. Now he's on the exam. And I fear for this country if the president tomorrow were to exercise his powers in the constitution yeah. and have a reshuffle of the cabinet, what will happen to what we've seen with these exams? Yeah. And we get somebody else who has a different approach. Who has a different approach. Yeah. Well, I suppose many would uh, <laughs> say, let Matiangi continue. In fact, I saw a few people tweeting and saying there needs to be a cloning yeah, of Matiangi, Matiangi to some of these other uh, ministries. Others are saying that they need to take him to IEBC. I, uh, yes, I saw that one as well. Say, yeah, we'll have the election results, chop, chop. Yeah, be before you get home, <laughs> Before you get out. home, you'll know who the president yeah. is. Yeah. That's on a lighter note. But talk to me about when you look at now these results, all of these candidates getting their results, none was cancelled. Uh, four years later, it will be a different story for most of them because first not all of them will be able to get spaces in, in secondary, secondary school uh -huh. you know and some of them even if they do when you look at you know the best performers in primary school do they end up also being best performers at the end uh, of the form for or, or secondary school education so when you look going forward at these candidates what does that future for you pretend mm -hmm. now what, what I, I want to uh, reiterate what uh, uh, professor Mago has said yesterday that in any situation where there is competition, in normal circumstances, right. there is a five to 10 uh, percentage entire group or cohort mm -hmm. that will be exceptional. Right. But then there's also another five to 10 percent that may be below average. But then that is what they call the normal distribution. Mm -hmm. We have been seeing abnormal distribution where uh, in a class of uh, 300, 250 score A, and only you know, 50 get an average mark. Now, that is beginning to change, and these learners need to be told early that you scoring 400 marks in primary is not a guarantee that you will score an A in secondary school. But if you work hard, you can keep the tempo and the standard. Right. We've seen a few who went, they were top in primary and became top in secondary. And even at the university, they ended up getting a first class, mm -hmm. but they are in a, a minority. Another thing is that our system is like a funnel. 
Yeah, it, uh, it is it is open, but it narrows down. Narrows down. Yes, as we move from one step to another. Mm. So we have nearly one million children sitting KCP. We are literally going to have only around six hundred thousand get into secondary school, mm. and we will reduce that to less than a hundred thousand getting to university. Mm. It's unfortunate because it is wasted investment. Look at it this way, Sophia. Why train somebody eight years in primary, four years in secondary, for them to go and ride border border? Mm. It's a waste of money. Right. But this is taxpayers' money. So we need to hold the government and the system to account that our money needs to be put to good use. Yeah. Instead of uh, uh, people getting the allowances and the many things that happen within the system, why can't we dedicate the budget and say, this year, the education sector is going to get one million classrooms mm. for everybody to go to school. Why is it difficult? But we always remember to have a, a bouquet of flowers for the senior people in government and, yeah. uh, and, and, and a few niceties for, nice for them. Yeah. So on a scale of zero, well, let's say one to ten. One to ten. Ten being the best. Yes. How would you rank uh, CS Matiangi? Um, I'll be careful not to give him 10 out of 10 <laughs> now because we just begun. So he's just done for me. This is just 30% of the work. Mm -hmm. So we still have 70%. And I'm saying 30% because he's only dealt with the examination for primary. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for secondary. Right. And we are still silent and nothing is happening for our tertiary education. Mm -hmm. So if he's able to move through the whole continuum of education and clean it up, yes then that will be when I'll score him. But for now, yeah. for me, he has a 5 out of 10. He has a 5 out yes. of 10. Not uh -huh. very bad. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because previously, the previous CS, I'll, I've given him a 2. A two. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Masai, it's always a pleasure to have you with us, uh, giving us your insights on, of course, uh, perspectives on matters education. Much Thank appreciated. You. Thank you very Jonathan much. Masai yeah. with us here on News Centre. Let's uh, now talk to you about our top story uh, this uh, morning before we go to break, which is the celebrations that continue across Kenya for best performing candidates in the just released results. Victor Oduoro Diambo from the Daisy Special School for the Physically Handicapped emerging top of the pile with 437 marks. So Diambo was closely followed by Sangora. Winston, who scored 426 marks in this year's examination, saw a near total eradication of malpractices with only 27 cases of attempted malpractice reported. Girls uh, performed better than girls, than boys rather, in English, uh, Kiswahili and Sign Language, while boys excelled in math, science, social studies and religion. You're watching News Center here on KTN News on this uh, second day of December. Stay with us. We still have a lot in store for you. This is KTN News.